Max Theodor Felix von Laue, the 9th of October 1879 to the 24th of April 1960, was a German physicist who won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1914 for his discovery of the diffraction of X-rays by crystals. In addition to his scientific endeavors with contributions in optics, crystallography, quantum theory, superconductivity, and the theory of relativity, he had a number of administrative positions which advanced and guided German scientific research and development during four decades. A strong objector to National Socialism, he was instrumental in re-establishing and organizing German science after World War II. Topic. Biography topic. Early years Laue was born in Pfaffendorf, now part of Koblenz, Germany, to Julius Laue and Minna Zeriner. In 1898, after passing his abitur in Strasbourg, he began his compulsory year of military service, after which in 1899 he started to study mathematics, physics, and chemistry at the University of Strasbourg, the University of Göttingen, and the Ludwig Maximilian University of Munich LMU. At Göttingen, he was greatly influenced by the physicists Waldemar Voigt and Max Abraham and the mathematician David Hilbert. After only one semester at Munich, he went to the Friedrich Wilhelms University of Berlin in 1902. There, he studied under Max Planck, who gave birth to the quantum theory revolution on 14 December 1900, when he delivered his famous paper before the Deutsche Physikalische Gesellschaft. At Berlin, Laue attended lectures by Otto Lummer on heat radiation and interference spectroscopy, the influence of which can be seen in Laue's dissertation on interference phenomena in plane parallel plates, for which he received his doctorate in 1903. Thereafter, Laue spent 1903-1905 at Göttingen. Laue completed his habilitation in 1906 under Arnold Sommerfeld at LMU. Topic. Career. In 1906, Laue became a private dozen in Berlin and an assistant to Planck. He also met Albert Einstein for the first time, they became friends and Laue went on to contribute to the acceptance and development of Einstein's theory of relativity. Laue continued as assistant to Planck until 1909. In Berlin, he worked on the application of entropy to radiation fields and on the thermodynamic significance of the coherence of light waves. From 1909 to 1912, Laue was a private dozent at the Institute for Theoretical Physics, under Arnold Sommerfeld, at LMU. During the 1911 Christmas recess and in January 1912, Paul Peter Ewald was finishing the writing of his doctoral thesis under Sommerfeld. It was on a walk through the Englischer Garten in Munich in January, that Ewald told Laue about his thesis topic. The wavelengths of concern to Ewald were in the visible region of the spectrum and hence much larger than the spacing between the resonators in Ewald's crystal model. Laue seemed distracted and wanted to know what would be the effect if much smaller wavelengths were considered. In June, Sommerfeld reported to the Physikalische Gesellschaft of Göttingen on the successful diffraction of X-rays by Laue, Paul Nipping and Walter Friedrich at LMU, for which Laue would be awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics, in 1914. While at Munich, he wrote the first volume of his book on relativity during the period 1910-1911. In 1912, Laue was called to the University of Zurich as an extraordinary professor of physics. In 1913, his father was raised to the ranks of hereditary nobility, Laue then became Max von Laue. In 1914 a new Professor Extraordinarius Chair of Theoretical Physics had been created at the University of Berlin. Laue was offered the position but turned it down, and it was offered to Max Born. But Born was in the army until WWI ended, and before he had occupied the chair, Laue changed his mind and accepted the position. From 1914 to 1919, Laue was at the University of Frankfurt as Ordinarius Professor of Theoretical Physics. From 1916, he was engaged in vacuum tube development, at the University of Würzburg, for use in military telephony and wireless communications. In 1919, Laue was called to the University of Berlin as Ordinarius Professor of Theoretical Physics, a position he held until 1943, when he was declared emeritus, with his consent and one year before the mandatory retirement age. At the university in 1919, other notables were Walther Nernst, Fritz Haber, and James Franck. 
Laue, as one of the organizers of the weekly Berlin Physics Colloquium, typically sat in the front row with Nernst and Einstein, who would come over from the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute für Physik in Berlin Dahlem, where he was the director. Among Laue's notable students at the university were Leo Schillard, Fritz London, Max Kohler, and Erna Weber. In 1921, he published the second volume of his book on relativity. As a consultant to the Physikalische Technische Reichsanstalt, PTR, Laue met Walther Meissner, who was working there on superconductivity. Meissner had discovered that a weak magnetic field decays rapidly to zero in the interior of a superconductor, which is known as the Meissner effect. Laue showed in 1932 that the threshold of the applied magnetic field which destroys superconductivity varies with the shape of the body. Laue published a total of 12 papers and a book on superconductivity. One of the papers was co-authored with Fritz London and his brother Heinz. Meissner published a biography on Laue in 1960, The Kaiser Wilhelm Gesellschaft zur Forderung der Wissenschaften today, Max Planck Gesellschaft zur Forderung der Wissenschaften was founded in 1911. Its purpose was to promote the sciences by founding and maintaining research institutes. One such institute was the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute für Physik KWIP, founded in Berlin Dahlem in 1914, with Einstein as director. Laue was a trustee of the institute from 1917, and in 1922 he was appointed deputy director, whereupon Laue took over the administrative duties from Einstein. Einstein was traveling abroad when Adolf Hitler became chancellor in January 1933, and Einstein did not return to Germany. Laue then became acting director of the KWIP, a position he held until 1946 or 1948, except for the period 1935-1939, when Peter Debye was director. In 1943, to avoid casualties to the personnel, the KWIP moved to Heckingen. It was at Heckingen that Laue wrote his book on the history of physics Geschichte der Physik, which was eventually translated into seven other languages. Topic. Opposition to Nazism Laue opposed National Socialism in general and Deutsche Physik in particular, the former persecuted the Jews, in general, and the latter, among other things, put down Einstein's theory of relativity as Jewish physics. Laue and his close friend Otto Hahn secretly helped scientific colleagues persecuted by National Socialist policies to emigrate from Germany. Laue also openly opposed the policies. An address on 18 September 1933 at the opening of the Physics Convention in Würzburg, opposition to Johannes Stark, an obituary note on Fritz Haber in 1934, and attendance at a commemoration for Haber are examples which clearly illustrate Laue's courageous, open opposition. Laue, as chairman of the Deutsche Physikalische Gesellschaft, gave the opening address at the 1933 Physics Convention. In it, he compared the persecution of Galileo and the oppression of his scientific views on the solar theory of Copernicus to the then conflict and persecution over the theory of relativity by the proponents of Deutsche Physik, against the work of Einstein, labeled Jewish physics. Johannes Stark, who had received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1919, wished to become the Führer of German physics and was a proponent of Deutsche Physik. Against the unanimous advice of those consulted, Stark was appointed president of the PTR in May 1933. However, Laue successfully blocked Stark's regular membership in the Prussian Academy of Sciences. Haber received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1918. In spite of this and his many other contributions to Germany, he was forced to emigrate from Germany as a result of the law for the restoration of the professional civil service, which removed Jews from their jobs. Laue's obituary note praising Haber and comparing his forced emigration to the expulsion of Themistocles from Athens was a direct affront to the policies of National Socialism. In connection with Haber, Max Planck, Otto Hahn and Laue organized a commemoration event held in Berlin Dahlem on 29 January 1935, the first anniversary of Haber's death. Attendance at the event by professors in the civil service had been expressly forbidden by the government. While many scientific and technical personnel were represented at the memorial by their wives, Laue and Wolfgang Hubner were the only two professors to attend. This was yet another blatant demonstration of Laue's opposition to National Socialism. The date of the first anniversary of Haber's death was also one day before the second anniversary of National Socialism seizing power in Germany, thus further increasing the affront given by holding the event. The speech and the obituary note earned Laue government reprimands. 
Furthermore, in response to Lowy blocking Stark's regular membership in the Prussian Academy of Sciences, Stark, in December 1933, had Lowy sacked from his position as advisor to the PTR, which Lowy had held since 1925. Chapters 4 and 5, in Welker's Nazi Science, Myth, Truth, and the Atomic Bomb, present a more detailed account of the struggle by Lowy and Planck against the Nazi takeover of the Prussian Academy of Sciences. Hidden Nobel Prize When Nazi Germany invaded Denmark in World War II, the Hungarian chemist George de Hevesy dissolved the Nobel Prize gold medals of Lowy and James Franck in Aqua Regia to prevent the Nazis from discovering them. At the time, it was illegal to take gold out of the country, and if it had been discovered that Lowy had done so he could have faced prosecution in Germany. Hevesy placed the resulting solution on a shelf in his laboratory at the Niels Bohr Institute. After the war, he returned to find the solution undisturbed and precipitated the gold out of the acid. The Nobel Society then recast the Nobel Prize gold medals, using the original gold. Post-war On 23 April 1945, French troops entered Heckingen, followed the next day by a contingent of Operation Alsos, an operation to investigate the German nuclear energy effort, seize equipment, and prevent German scientists from being captured by the Soviets. The scientific advisor to the operation was the Dutch-American physicist Samuel Goudsmit, who, adorned with a steel helmet, appeared at Lowy's home. Lowy was taken into custody and taken to Huntingdon, England, and interned at Farm Hall with other scientists thought to be involved in nuclear research and development. While incarcerated, Lowy was a reminder to the other detainees that one could survive the Nazi reign without having compromised. This alienated him from others being detained. During his incarceration, Lowy wrote a paper on the absorption of X-rays under the interference conditions, and it was later published in Acta Crystallographica. On 2 October 1945 Lowy, Otto Hahn, and Werner Heisenberg, were taken to meet with Henry Hallett Dale, president of the Royal Society, and other members of the Society. There, Lowy was invited to attend the 9 November 1945 Royal Society meeting in memory of the German physicist Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen, who discovered X-rays. Permission was, however, not forthcoming from the military authorities detaining von Lowy. Lowy was returned to Germany early in 1946. He went back to being acting director of the KWIP, which had been moved to Göttingen. It was also in 1946 that the Kaiser Wilhelm Gesellschaft was renamed the Max Planck Gesellschaft, and, likewise, the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute für Physik became the Max Planck Institute für Physik. Lowy also became an adjunct professor at the University of Göttingen. In addition to his administrative and teaching responsibilities, Lowy wrote his book on superconductivity, Theorie der Superleitung, and revised his books on electron diffraction, Materialen und IHRE Interferenzen, and the first volume of his two volume book on relativity. In July 1946, Lowy went back to England, only four months after having been interned there, to attend an international conference on crystallography. This was a distinct honor, as he was the only German invited to attend. He was extended many courtesies by the British officer who escorted him there and back, and a well known English crystallographer as his host. Lowy was even allowed to wander around London on his own free will. After the war, there was much to be done in re establishing and organising German scientific endeavours. Lowy participated in some key roles. In 1946, he initiated the founding of the Deutsche Physikalische Gesellschaft in only the British occupation zone, as the Allied Control Council would not initially allow organizations across occupation zone boundaries. During the war, the PTR had been dispersed. Von Lowy, from 1946 to 1948, worked on its reunification across three zones and its location at new facilities in Braunschweig. Additionally, it took on a new name as the Physikalische Technische Bundesanstalt, but administration was not taken over by Germany until after the formation of West Germany on 23 May 1949. Circa 1948, the president of the American Physical Society asked Lowy to report on the status of physics in Germany. His report was published in 1949 in the American Journal of Physics. In 1950, Lowy participated in the creation of the Verband Deutscher Physikalischer Gesellschaften, formerly affiliated under the Nordwest Dutch Physikalische Gesellschaft. In April 1951, Lowy became director of the Max Planck Institut für Physikalische Chemie und Elektrochemie, a position he held until 1959. 
In 1953, at the request of Laue, the institute was renamed the Fritz Haber Institute für Physikalische Chemie und Elektrochemie der Max Planck Gesellschaft. Topic: <laughs> Personal life. It was in 1913 that Laue's father, Julius Laue, a civil servant in the military administration, was raised into the ranks of hereditary nobility. Thus Max Laue became Max von Laue. Laue married Magdalene Degen, while he was a private dozen at LMU. They had two children. Among Laue's chief recreational activities were mountaineering, motoring in his automobile, motor biking, sailing, and skiing. While not a mountain climber, he did enjoy hiking on the alpine glaciers with his friends. On 8 April 1960, while he was driving to his laboratory, Laue's car was struck in Berlin by a motorcyclist, who had received his license only two days earlier. The motorcyclist was killed and Laue's car was overturned. He died from his injuries 16 days later on 24 April. Being a profound believer, he had asked that his epitaph should read that he had died trusting firmly in God's mercy. Topic organizations 1919, corresponding member of the Prussian Academy of Sciences 1921, regular member of the Prussian Academy of Sciences from 1921, chairman of the Physics Commission of the Notgemeinschaft der Deutschen Wissenschaft renamed in 1937, Deutsche Gemeinschaft zur Erhaltung und Forderung der Forschung. No longer active by 1945, from 1922, member of the Board of Trustees of the Potsdam Astrophysics Observatory 1925-1933, advisor to the Physikalische Technische Reichsanstalt today, Physikalische Technische Bundesanstalt. Laue had been sacked in 1933 from his advisory position by Johannes Stark, Nobel Prize recipient and president of the Physikalische Technische Reichsanstalt, in retribution for Laue's open opposition to the Nazis by blocking Stark's regular membership in the Prussian Academy of Sciences. 1931-1933, chairman of the Deutsche Physikalische Gesellschaft memberships in the Russian Academy of Sciences, the Kant Society, the Austrian Academy of Sciences 1960, the American Physical Society, the Société Française de Physique and the Société Française de Mineralogie et Crystallographie. Corresponding member of the Academies of Sciences of Göttingen, Munich, Turin, Stockholm, Rome, Papal, Madrid, the Academia dei Lincei of Rome, and the Royal Society of London. Topic honors and awards 1914, Nobel Prize for Physics 1932, Max Planck Medal of the Deutsche Physikalische Gesellschaft 1952, Knight of the Order pour la Merit 1953, Grand Cross with Star for Federal Services 1957, Officer of the Legion of Honor of France 1959, Helmholtz Medal of the East Berlin Academy of Sciences Landenberg Medal Bimala Chern Law Gold Medal of the Indian Association at Calcutta Topic Selected Bibliography Max von Laue died Relativitätstheorie. Band 1, Die Spezielle Relativitätstheorie Fried R. Vi Weg & Son, Braunschweig, 1911, and 1919 Max von Laue das Relativitätstheorie. Erster Band. Das Relativitätsprinzip der Lorentz Transformation. Vierte Vermeerte Auflage, Fried R. Vi Weg & Son, 1921 Max von Laue die Relativitätstheorie. Zweiter Band, Die Allgemeine Relativitätstheorie und Einstein's Lehre von der Schwerkraft Fried R. Vi Weg & Son, Braunschweig, 1921 and 1923 Max von Laue Korpuskular und Wellentheorie Leipzig, 1933 Max von Laue die Interferenzen von Röntgen und Elektroninstrahlen. Fun Vortrage, Springer, 1935 Max von Laue eine Ausgestaltung der Londonschen Theorie der Superleitung Barth, 1942 Max von Laue Materiolen und IHRE Interferenzen Akadem. Verl, Jess. Becker and Erler, 1944 Gerist und Portig, 1948 Max von Laue Theorie der Superleitung Springer, 1947 and 1949 Max von Laue, translated by Lothar Meyer and William Band Theory of Superconductivity NY, 1952 Max von Laue Geschichte der Physik Univ, Verl, 1946 and 1947, Athenum Verl, 1950 and Ulstein Taschenbecker Verl, 1959, 1966 and 1980 
1882, this book was translated into seven other languages. Max von Laue, translated by Ralph E. O. S. Per History of Physics, Academic Press, 1950. Max von Laue, History de la Physique, Lamari, 1953. Max von Laue, Geschiedenis der Naturkunde, S. Gravenhage, Stolz, 1950 and 1954. Max Planck and Max von Laue, Wissenschaftliche Selbstbiographie, Barth, 1948. Max von Laue, Röntgenstellenterferenzen Akadem. Verl, Jess, 1948 Max von Laue die Relativitätstheorie. B.D. 2. Die Allgemeine Relativitätstheorie Weg, 1953 Max Planck and Max von Laue Vorlesungen über Thermodynamik de Greider Gebendien, 1954 Walter Friedrich, Paul Nipping, and Max von Laue Interferenzerscheinungen bei Röntgenstrahlen J. A. Barth, 1955. Max von Laue die Relativitätstheorie. B. D. 1. Die Spezielle Relativitätstheorie. Weg, 1955. Max von Laue die Relativitätstheorie. B. D. 2. Die Allgemeine Relativitätstheorie. Weg, 1956. Max von Laue. Max von Laue. Max von Laue Röntgenwellenfelder in Kristallen Akademie Verl, 1959 Max von Laue von Laue Festschrift, 1 Akadem. Verl, Jess, 1959 Max von Laue von Laue Festschrift, 2 Akadem. Verl, Jess, 1960 Max von Laue and Ernst Heinz Wagner Röntgenstrahl Interferenzen Akadem. Verl, Jess, 1960 Max von Laue and Friedrich Beck die Relativitätstheorie. B.D. 1. Die Spezielle Relativitätstheorie Weg, 1961 and 1965 Max von Laue Gesemelt Schriften und Vorträge. B.D. 1. Weg, 1961 Max von Laue Gesemelt Schriften und Vorträge. B.D. 2. Weg, 1961 Max von Laue Gesemelt Schriften und Vorträge. BD 3 Weg, 1961 Max von Laue Azatz und Vorträge Weg, 1961 and 1962 Max von Laue and Friedrich Beck die Relativitätstheorie BD 2 Die Allgemeine Relativitätstheorie Weg, 1965 Max von Laue die Relativitätstheorie 2 Die Allgemeine Relativitätstheorie Weg Freide R. und Sonvier, 1982 Topic. Other publications Laue, Max von 1913. Kritisch Bemerkungen zu den Dutungen der Fotogramm von Friedrich und Nipping. Physikalische Zeitschrift. 14 10, 421–423. Received 1 April 1913, published in issue No. 10 of 15 May 1913. As cited in Mera, Vol. 5, Part 2, 2001, p. 922. Laue, Max von 1913. Zur Optik der Raumgitter. Physikalische Zeitschrift. 14 21, 1040-1041. Received 1 October 1913, published in issue No. 21 of 1 November 1913. As cited in Mera, Vol. 5, Part 2, 2001, p. 922. Laue, Max von 1913. Röntgenstrahlinterferenzen. Physikalische Zeitschrift. 14, 22 1075-1079. Presented on 24 September 1913 at the 85th Natterforscherversammlung, Vienna, published in issue No. 22-23 of 15 November 1913. As cited in Mera, Vol. 5, Part 2, 2001, p. 922. Laue, Max von 1913. Zur Optik der Raumgitter. Physikalische Zeitschrift. 14, 25, 1286-1287. Received 21 November 1913, published in issue No. 25 of 15 December 1913. As cited in Mera, Vol. 5, Part 2, 2001, p. 922. Laue, Max von, Fritz London, Heinz London 1935. Zur Theorie der Superleitung. Zeitschrift für Physik. 96 5-6, 359-364. Bibcode, 1935 ZPHY
359L. Doi 10.1007/BF0134386A. Topic. See also. History of special relativity. Lowy equations. Institute Lowy Langevin. Lowy crater. 10762 von Lowy. Topic. References. Topic. Sources. Henschel, Klaus, editor, and Ann M. Henschel, editorial assistant and translator, 1996. Physics and National Socialism: An Anthology of Primary Sources. Basel: Berkhauser Verlag. ISBN 0-8176-5312-0, CS1 maint, Extra Text, Authors List link. Walker, Mark H. 1995. Nazi Science, Myth, Truth, and the German Atomic Bomb. New York, Plenum Press. ISBN 0-306-44941-2. Further reading Greenspan, Nancy Thorndike 2005. The End of the Certain World, The Life and Science of Max Born. New York, Basic Books. ISBN 0-7382-0693-8. Herneck, Friedrich 1979. Max von Laue. Leipzig, Teubner. Jammer, Max 1966. The Conceptual Development of Quantum Mechanics. New York, McGraw-Hill. Metawar, Jean, Pike, David 2012. Hitler's Gift, The True Story of the Scientists Expelled by the Nazi Regime paperback. New York, Arcade Publishing. ISBN 978-1-61145-709-4, CS1 maint, Multiple Names, Authors List link. Mara, Jagdish, Helmut Reckenberg 2001. The Historical Development of Quantum Theory. Volume 1 Part 1 The Quantum Theory of Planck, Einstein, Bohr and Sommerfeld 1900-1925, Its Foundation and the Rise of Its Difficulties. Springer. ISBN 0-387-95174-1. Mara, Jagdish, Helmut Reckenberg 2001. The Historical Development of Quantum Theory. Volume 1 Part 2 The Quantum Theory of Planck, Einstein, Bohr and Sommerfeld 1900-1925, Its Foundation and the Rise of Its Difficulties. Springer. ISBN 0-387-95175-X. Mara, Jagdish, Helmut Reckenberg 2001. The Historical Development of Quantum Theory. Volume 5 Erwin Schrödinger and the Rise of Wave Mechanics. Part 1 Schrödinger in Vienna and Zurich 1887-1925. Springer. ISBN 0-387-95179-2. Mara, Jagdish, Helmut Reckenberg 2001. The Historical Development of Quantum Theory. Volume 5 Erwin Schrödinger and the Rise of Wave Mechanics. Part 2 Schrödinger in Vienna and Zurich 1887-1925. Springer. ISBN 0-387-95180-6. Rosenthal Schneider, Ilse 1988. Begenungen MIT Einstein, von Laue und Planck. Realität und wissenschaftliche Wahrheit. Braunschweig, Vi Weg. ISBN 3-528-08970-9. Rosenthal Schneider, Ilse 1980. Reality and Scientific Truth, Discussions with Einstein, von Laue, and Planck. Wayne State University. ISBN 0-8143-1650-6. Walker, Mark H. 1993. German National Socialism and the Quest for Nuclear Power, 1939-1949. Cambridge, UK, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0-521-43804-7. Zietz, Katerina. 2006. Max von Laue 1879-1960 Sein Bedüting für den Wiederaufbau der Deutschen Wissenschaft nach dem Zweiten Weltkrieg. Steiner Franz Verlag. ISBN 3-515-08814-8. External links 
Max von Laue Biography – Deutsches Historisches Museum Berlin in German. Max von Laue Biography at the Wayback Machine archived the 3rd of February 1999 University of Frankfurt on Main in German Max von Laue Nobel Prize Biography Nobel Lecture Address Max von Laue concerning the detection of x-ray interferences the 12th of November 1915 Nobel Presentation Address an account of Laue's work is by Professor G Granquist chairman of the Nobel Committee for Physics